Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-epileptic agents. In this video, I am going to explain about epilepsy pathophysiology, types of epilepsy and drugs used to treat epilepsy. This is my YouTube channel. If you like my video content, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. Now, we need to understand the difference between convulsions, seizure and epilepsy. Let us see the terms individually. Now, convulsions is uncontrolled muscle spasms that cause jerky motions. Most of the time people get a kind of jerky motions with all bodily muscles contracting. Now, these convulsions can occur during an epileptic seizure or it means it is because of epilepsy or it could be because of sudden fever spike, tetanus or very low blood sugar level. Understand these things. Convulsions could be epileptic or non-epileptic. Don't think always convulsions are caused by epilepsy. Non-epileptic uh, conditions like sudden high fever, tetanus and very low blood sugar also cause convulsions. When you see seizures, it is an abnormal activity in the brain. There is a problem in the central nervous system and that results in abnormal electrical activity. In some of the textbook, it is also known as continuous firing of brain. Continuous firing means continuous depolarization of the brain. Now, epilepsy, when the seizures become chronic or multiple times the seizures are coming, then it becomes epilepsy. So, the major character, character of epilepsy is seizures. So, uh, epilepsy is characterized by multiple seizures. And continuous firing means a repetitive depolarization or continuous CNS activity of the brain is what causes epilepsy. So, these are the difference between convulsion, seizure and epilepsy. Now, so epilepsy is a seizure disorder where you have recurring and unpredictable seizure occurrence is there. Now, seizures, neurons are synchronously active or firing. That means continuous depolarization is what is causing seizures. Why does it occur? Basically, understand see, epilepsy is because of increased activity of neurons. This is what is causing epilepsy. Now, why does it occur? Either it is because of too much of excitation or too little inhibition is what is causing epilepsy. Now, what do you mean by this excitation and inhibition? Whenever the neurons undergo depolarization, that is what is known as excitation. When neurons undergo hyperpolarization, it is what is called as inhibition. So, there are channels and neurotransmitters which will cause these two things. Like depolarization, sodium entry into the cell causes depolarization. Calcium entry into the brain causes depolarization. Neurotransmitters like glutamate, aspartate, will also cause depolarization. So, hyperactivity of all these three is what is causing continuous depolarization. That is what is known as too much excitation. Whereas, hyperpolarization is because of entry of chloride ions, which may be due to a neurotransmitter called gamma aminobutric acid. So, as I told you already, CNS hyperactivity is what is causing epilepsy. Either it is because of too much of excitation or too little inhibition when there is no very less amount of hyperpolarization that is also causes epilepsy. This results in sudden excitatory signals over and over again. They are, that is what is called as paroxysmal condition. So, this is about epilepsy. Now, when you see the types of epilepsy, look at them. See, epileptic seizure or uh, see, seizure is a CNS uh, continuous firing or CNS problem. If the problem occurs at, is, at a particular local area, this is called as partial local or focal seizures because it is restricted to only one area. So, depending upon the consciousness, it is classified as simple and complex. In simple, consciousness is not impaired. That means the subject is awake. Whereas, in complex, impairment of consciousness occurs. So, this is what is meant by partial seizures. When you see the generalized seizures, the whole brain is involved. Both the hemispheres are involved. So, basically, Major types are partial seizures and generalized seizures. In generalized seizures, you have option seizures, myoclonic, clonic, tonic, tonic, clonic, and atonic are there. The important two things are tonic, clonic, which is also known as grand mal epilepsy, option seizures, which is known as petit mal epilepsy. Now, some unclassified epileptic seizures are also there, like febrile seizures. When young children, the temperature is very high, they may, they may get a seizure attack, that is known as febrile seizures. Now, these times, let us dig in detail about these types. So, the generalized seizures will occur to both cerebral hemispheres. Now, tonic 
she uses means tonicity means stiffness people all the muscles will become stiff that is what becomes in to, that is what happens in tonic seizures a tonic means there is no stiffness no tonicity is there all the muscles are relaxed see in both the conditions the subject will fall because of either complete contraction of muscles or complete relaxation of muscles now in this no contractions will be there a tonic now clonic is characterized by convulsions now understand this one all the uh, epileptic epilepsy do not have convulsions only clonic and tonic clonic will have convulsions convulsions as we have seen continuous spasm and relaxation of bodily jerky movements now tonic clonic means is a combination of tonic too much of contraction and clonic Con uh, convulsions will be there now myoclonic means it occurs to a muscle one in the muscle the twitching movements will be there now option seizure means uh, see the brain becomes uh, uh, the, uh, the the subject will become absent minded so that is what is called as option seizures now option seizures is because of calcium entry especially it occurs in children see the important things are these two seizures tonic clonic seizures are known as grand mal epilepsy whereas option seizures are known as petit mal epilepsy so these are all the major types of epilepsy now when you see the treatment see we have seen epilepsy is because of either too much of excitation or too little of inhibition what causes this too much of excitation sodium entry calcium entry or uh, glutamic acid this is an excitatory neurotransmitter high effects of glutamic acid or too little inhibition is because of gaba so in order to treat epilepsy what we have to do we need to reduce these things or increase these things look at the mechanisms now see first to mechanism reduce the axonal conductance by preventing sodium influx through <laughs> sodium channels the example of the drugs carbamazepine phenytoin so literally these are cns sodium channel blockers cns sodium channel blockers so carbamazepine phenytoin comes under this class now the next class is increase the inhibitory tone by facilitation of gaba mediated hyperpolarization literally you are enhancing cns inhibition by enhancing inhibitory neurotransmitter effects example of the drugs barbiturates and benzodiazepines now the third mechanism reduce the excitatory effects of glutamic acid we have seen glutamic acid is an excitatory neurotransmitter this can be achieved by using drugs like lamotrigine and topiramate which block amp receptor are felbamate which blocks nmda receptor now the last mechanism reduce presynaptic calcium influx through type t channels example of the drug <coughs> i'm sorry ethosuximate and valproic acid see many of the textbooks will be giving lot of drugs but remember these drugs sodium channel blockers sodium channel blockers in the brain carbamazepine and phenytoin now inhibitory neurotransmission uh, enhancers like benzodiazepine and barbiturates next glutamate neurotransmitter blockers lamotrigine topiramate and felbamate finally calcium channel blockers like ethosuximate and valproic acid the important classes of the drugs now look at this this is what happens sodium channel blockers will be blocking this gate inside gate carbamazepine phenytoin topiramate see some of the drugs will be acting on by multiple mechanisms when you take valproic acid it can block sodium channels too it can also enhance gaba transmission and it blocks calcium channel so multiple actions will be there so sodium channels will be blocked by carbamazepine topiramate and phenytoin whereas calcium channels blocked by valproate ethosuximate now this is important one see <clears throat> gaba transmission is affected by many of the drugs gaba gamma aminobutyric acid is synthesized by glutamate with the help of enzyme glutamic acid decarboxylase so when this enzyme activates enhanced gaba synthesis is increased valproate enhances gaba synthesis now once gaba is synthesized it is released from the vesicles the release of gaba is enhanced by gaba pentin and pregabalin once released gaba can act on gaba a and gaba b gaba a is ion channel chloride ion channel and this is what causes hyperpolarization so this gaba a under this receptor drugs like barbiturate and benzodiazepines will be acting now once released gaba can be metabolized by gaba transaminase once it is metabolized it becomes inactive so this is this metabolism is inhibited by vigabatrin 
So by inhibiting the me uh, metabolism, GABA levels can be enhanced. Now, the excess GABA is uptaken back into the neuron by GABA transporter, which is inhibited by thiagabine. So all these drugs are important ones, like valproate, gabapentin, pregabalin, benzodiazepines and barbiturates, vigabatrin, thiagabine. All of them will enhance GABA neurotransmission, which are widely used to treat epilepsies. Now let us see the individual agents. Now, phenytoin, as we have seen, it blocks sodium channels. It prevents sheases. <coughs> now, the pharmacokinetics, it has got variable absorption, non-linear kinetics. They induce cytochrome P450 enzymes, and it follows zero-order kinetics. Now, the important things are side effects. See, epilepsy is because of CNS activation. So you use drugs to reduce CNS activation, so all epileptic drugs will cause a kind of CNS depression. Now gingival hyperplasia, the gums <coughs> swelling will be there by using this drug. Hirsutism, excessive hair growth or hypertrichosis is one of the side effects of phenotype. Now it also reduces vitamin D and folate because, because of that it causes osteomalacia and megaloblastic anemia and aplastic anemia. Now finally the important adverse effect is it, cause, it is a teratogenic, it causes cleft lip and palate. So this drug is uh, teratogenic. Now the next one, carbamazepine. It also sodium channel blocker. It is used to treat sheases and it is a drug of choice to treat trisaminal neuralgia. It can also be used to treat bipolar disorder depression. Now pharmacokinetic, it also induces cytochrome P450. Now the major adverse effects are, as I told you, CNS depression is very common for all anti-epileptic drugs. It also causes osteomalacia, anemia, aplastic anemia, dermatitis and increases antidiotic hormone secretion. Again, this drug carbamazepine 2 causes teratogenicity, like clip, cleft lip and palate and spina bifida. Valproic acid, which is very important drug, which has got multiple mechanisms of action. It blocks sodium channel, it enhances GABA, uh, GABA transaminase, GABA metabolizing enzyme is inhibited, so GABA transmission effects are increased. It also blocks calcium channel. Now it is used to treat uh, sheases, this is also used to treat mania and migraine. <coughs> this one, this drug <laughs> inhibits cytochrome P450 enzymes. Side effect, hepatotoxicity, thrombocytopenia, pancreatitis, and alopecia. This also causes teratogenicity. Observe all the three drugs are causing teratogenicity. Now, some of the important points. See, benzodiazepines are, in that, loragicum is preferred to treat status epilepticus. When epileptic attack is, is remains more than five minutes, that condition is known as status epilepticus. And to treat that, benzodiazepines, especially loragicum, is preferred. Now, carbamazepine is drug of choice to treat partial seizures and trisaminal neuralgia. Magnesium sulfate is used to treat convulsions occurs during labor or in a pregnant woman. Its toxicity can be monitored by knee-jerk responses. Understand magnesium sulfate is a drug of choice to treat epilepsy in pregnant women. Now, <coughs> to treat option seizures, ethoseximide is the preferred one. Option seizures, as we have seen, it is caused by calcium entry. Usually it occurs in children and ethoseximide is a calcium channel blocker. Now myoclonic shears, the drug of choice are valproate. Remaining drugs are also there but the top ones are the important one. So this is about the drug treatment of epilepsy. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this video.